Lesson number one, change. When I think of change, I like to imagine the transitions between seasons. This helps me view change as a beautiful unfolding rather than a terrifying process. I've always been fascinated with autumn foliage. I'm amazed by how the leaves wither and wilt before falling away. I often wonder, what gave perennial plants and trees enough trust in their creator to be born again come spring? I like to think their fiery golden hues represent the bravery it takes to shed what is no longer needed without question or doubt. Letting go has never been my strength. If I were a tree, I'd be scared out of my mind that my leaves would never return. But in my ideal world, change wouldn't incite fear. Instead, it would encourage shedding as a part of the natural process of becoming whole and lush. The shifting I've grown to know over the years isn't appealing, dreamy, or intrepidly anticipated. Instead, it's unsettling, at times chaotic and often terrifying. Learning how to lean into change and not run from it has been a pain in the ass on almost all occasions in my life. My relationship with necessary adjusting has been both tumultuous and invigorating. Through the inevitable discomfort of having to unlearn old bad habits, I had to take ownership of redefining my sense of self so that I could discover my purpose. And that meant embracing time alone, a season of complete solitude. Transforming on my own wasn't my first choice, but it's grown to be my most treasured. Being alone showed me that I could shed, release, and outgrow anything, including my old ways and bad habits that didn't serve me well. Change taught me the importance of self-autonomy, which I never quite believed I would come to know. The notion that I had the power to outgrow who I was and start a new relationship with who I wanted to be became clear to me when I was about 21. Even though it felt impossible, I wanted badly to reroute my life and find joy, but I didn't know where to start. Searching for and finding my how was the scariest thing I'd done in my life. Changing meant I had to start with being honest about who I was and who I wanted to be. It meant learning the difference between being alone and being lonely. I had to get my stuff together. And in order to do that, I knew I needed to leave people behind who were distracting me from my growth. I had to start from scratch and acknowledge my roles in the cycles that I said I wanted to break. Committing to change meant challenges and trust, which stripped me of everything that I knew. It was the summer of 2011 and I was approaching my 22nd birthday. The D.C. metro area was oppressive and brutally hot. I'd just been fired from my first real job as an office manager, where I was making $18 an hour. I thought that I was rolling in dough. The gig was sweet and easy, but I wasn't a good employee. In fact, leading up to that job, I had been a historically terrible staff member at every single place I'd been employed, from a retail job at Forever 21 for a day to nannying. I often joke that I'm likely still used as an example of what not to be and do at staff meetings. I did not like working for anyone, families, corporations, or nonprofits. My attitude made that clear to my employers. I was miserable at work because I had no idea what I wanted to do or be in life and... That cluelessness made things stressful. I was overwhelmed with the pressure of having to figure it out. Having a boss and reporting to someone, punching a time card, and needing to be someplace that sucked the life out of me wasn't my first choice. It actually wasn't a choice at all. When I was seven, I looked at my Nana and said, When I grow up, I want to work for myself so I can be with my family. Even as a child, I knew what I wanted my life to be, and it wasn't rooted in being an unhappy employee. But now as an adult with a child, I had to do what I had to do for her well-being, no matter how unfulfilling. 